let's use Lightroom to fix this raw file. We're going to be doing some basic adjustments, followed by a little bit of masking. Then we are going to do some color grading. And finally, we have to do a bit of focus stacking and we are going to clean up this shot in Photoshop. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So here we have our raw file opened up in Lightroom. And right away, I want to point out why I did not shoot HDR. Shooting HDR for this scene would make a lot of sense, since we have some harsh contrast between the brightest highlights and the darkest shadows. However, I wanted to shoot this as a long exposure, as you can see looking at the water and the clouds. In most cases, can shoot HDR in combination with a long exposure is because of the movement that's going on. Right here in the sky, the clouds are changing way too much over the course of several minutes. And thus combining a long exposure HDR with several shots recorded over a span of a few minutes will not work. This means we have to fix this scene with just the use of one exposure. So we want to start that in the basic tab. Right away, you do have quite a bunch of options with the profile. For example, you could choose Adobe Neutral. As you can see, this will brighten up the shadows and nicely bring down the highlights. However, I'm not quite happy with this profile. So what I want to do is I want to go with Adobe Landscape, which will also bring up the darkest parts a little bit, reduce the highlights. But as a bonus, we will get some more saturation. Then the next thing I want to change is actually the white balance. So I just want to bring up the temperature, introducing some warmer tones to the sunrise shot just right about here. Now for the exposure, I first want to try and fix the darkest parts. So I'm simply going to raise the exposure and I don't care about the highlights at this point. I'm just looking for a spot where we get some very subtle details in the shadows, from which point we can further work on the shadows. Just around here maybe. Then the next thing I want to do is to fix the blown out part in the sky. Therefore, I'm going to drop the highlights. And here it's very important to make sure to not drop it all the way because that makes it look very, very weird. Unfortunately, we cannot fix the most blown out parts. So I'm just embracing a little bit of overexposure in this case. So what I want to do is bring the highlights down to around this point. And from here on, I want to bring up the shadows further, tickling out details from the darkest parts just like this. And what I want to do as well is to raise the blacks quite a lot, which will make the whole image a lot softer. I think this looks great, but of course, that comes down to personal preferences. If you want to have some more contrast, don't raise the blacks as much. So I'm quite happy with how the exposure is looking so far. What I want to do is to introduce some whites. And again, this will make the overexposure in that very bright spot in the center a little stronger. However, I think that's okay as we get some more contrast by doing this. So this shot is already looking much better. What I want to do now is to introduce some texture. While this will make smaller details a little sharper, I'm also going to bring down the clarity and I'm going to bring down the dehaze. And the reason for me to do this is because bringing down clarity and dehaze will add some very subtle glow effect over the image, almost like an autumn glow effect. So I'm a really big fan of that. And then of course we want this image to be vibrant. So let's bring up the vibrance. And I guess I can also bring up the saturation a notch. Wonderful, that looks so much better already. So by just applying a bunch of basic adjustments, you can see we have saved the exposure quite nicely. The colors do look much better. But now let's continue with a bit of masking to do some local adjustments. For this image, there is not that much going on. However, I'm not quite happy with the top part of the sky. So what I want to do, I want to create a simple sky selection. And I want to subtract a radial gradient. And I'm going to cover the brightest and warmest parts of the sky with that radial gradient, just like this. And what I want to do next is to make the top part of the sky darker. However, we really need to be careful. If, you, if you're just going to drop the exposure, you can see some halo around the tree in the foreground and that's something we want to prevent. 
So I'm only going to drop the exposure a little bit. And I'm also going to bring up the contrast and I just hope this will bring us closer to what I want. Just like this. Now it, there is still a little bit of halo around that tree. I think it, it's really not that bad. So I want to keep it that way. We could bring down the temperature if we want to make the top part of the sky a little colder, just like that. But I think that's about it. Now I want to use another sky selection and I'm going to click on the three dots, go to intersect mask width and choose a radial gradient. Again, using that radial gradient, I'm covering the warmest, brightest parts of the sky just above the trees. And what I want to do here is to introduce some more colors. So I'm going to bring up the temperature. I'm also going to bring up the saturation. And we can add a more specific color tone by clicking on this kind of hidden color box right here. I'm going to set up the hue to something very warm. And let's bring up the saturation. Perfect. I think we're almost done. One more thing I want to do, however, I want to create another radial gradient. And with this one, I'm just covering this blown out spot in the sky. As I said, I want to embrace the overexposure in this area. However, I want to kind of make it less obvious. And I'm going to do this by adding glow. To add glow, I'm simply going to raise the blacks and I'm going to drop the clarity. And let's also drop the dehaze. And just like this, we added some glow around this bright spot. Perfect. So that's it for the masks we can compare it to before. Here is the image with just a bunch of base adjustments. And here we applied a bit of masking. Looks so much better. As I said, there's not much going on with the masking for this shot. However, we want to continue with the color grading. So let's open up the color mixer and I want to start in the hue panel. Here, I want to bring down the yellow hue. And I also want to bring down the orange hue. And I'm doing this just to give those warm clouds in the sky more of a red color tone, which I think just looks a bit better. Now, there is some very heavy purple color has going on in the top part of the sky. We can kind of reduce that by using the purple hue slider and bring it down. Just a little bit should be enough. Okay, then let's head over into the saturation tab. I want to bring up the red saturation, orange and yellow. And I even think I can bring up the blue tones. And at the same time, let's bring down purple. This is getting really good right here. Now let's do the split toning. And for sunrise shots like this, I really love applying split toning since it just works so good. I want to use the highlights for that. And of course we want to apply a warm color tone. So let's set up the hue first and then we can play around with the saturation depending on what we want. We can turn it up quite a bit to make it really intense. However, I think that's too much. I just want to bring it somewhere around here. At this point, we might get a little bit overwhelmed with all, with all the warmer color tones. So how can we fix that? We can use the midtones for that. So instead of applying a warm color tone to the midtones, we can choose a cold color tone somewhere around here. And again, bring up the saturation as much as we need it. So this way we are adding some very nice color balance between the highlights and the darker midtones. If you want, you could also use the shadows applying a cold color tone. However, I think that might be a bit too much. So I'm not going to do that. One more thing we can do in regards of the color grading is to go down into the calibration tab. What I personally like to do for sunrise shots like this is to just play around with the blue primary hue. This means I'm going to bring it down quite a bit, making those red tones a little more intense in the sky. And I also want to bring up the saturation. Wonderful, that looks great. Now the last thing we can do in Lightroom for this shot is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's do that. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking while holding down the Alt key so we can see where the sharpening is applied. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Perfect. As you can see, by just using Adobe Lightroom, we can nicely fix a long exposure like this, although the light conditions were very, very challenging. However, as I said, 
we want to use a little bit of Photoshop to clean up this image of a few of those tree branches and also do some focus stacking. Since right here this tree in the foreground is out of focus and this just doesn't look good. So unfortunately we cannot do this in Lightroom. We need Photoshop for that and we also do need a second image for this. So I'm going to use this image right here. Of course we need to copy the editing settings from the first scene to the second image. So I'm selecting both of them and just hit the sync button. Make sure to check all and hit synchronize. And once this is done, we can now finish this image in Photoshop. So right click, edit in and choose edit in Photoshop. Lightroom will then open up those two files separately in Photoshop. And that's why for the next step, I'm going to hit Ctrl A to select everything, hit Ctrl C, go to our base image and here hit Ctrl V. This way we have stacked the two images in one Photoshop file. Now due to the different focal points, these images are not aligned. We need to fix that. So select both layers, go to edit, choose auto align layers and simply hit OK. Photoshop will do the rest for you. So with these images perfectly aligned. We could use Photoshop's focus stacking feature, however I did have a few problems with this shot. So I want to do that manually, which is not that fun to do, but we need to do it. So let's go. I'm going to create a layer mask on this layer for the focus in the foreground. And let's invert that layer mask by hitting Ctrl I. Then I'm grabbing the brush tool by pressing B. Set the foreground color to white. Let's bring back the brush opacity to 100%. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And with the white brush, I'm going to paint over the black layer mask where we want the foreground to be sharp. So I'm basically just painting over this tree. This is looking much better. However, if you're not sure if you have covered all the area of the tree in the foreground, hold down the Alt key and click on the layer mask. You can see there are a few black spots left. I'm just going to paint over them. But this is looking good. So deactivating the foreground layer, you can see it's a little brighter than the background layer. And that's a problem. So to fix that, I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer and I'm holding down the Alt key and click between those two. This means we are creating a clipping layer. So everything we do to that curves adjustment layer will only affect the layer right beneath it. So with that in mind, we want to make this layer darker. So I'm just creating a point somewhere in the middle and drag it slightly to the right until the colors are fitting. This is looking much better. I can deactivate the curves adjustment layer so you can see the difference from before to after. Of course, this will make the tree darker, but we can use the layer mask right here to set the foreground color to black. And let's maybe bring down the brush opacity. And then I'm just going to Paint back in a little brightness, kind of, it's kind of like dodging. Okay, this looks very good. Now we do need to crop the image, of course, since we have aligned those two layers earlier. Let's do that real quick. Okay, I think this looks good. If you want, we can further work on the foreground by using a levels adjustment layer and just bringing up the brightness by dragging this point to the left. Okay, I want to invert that layer mask once more. Choose the brush tool, set the foreground color to white. And again, I'm going to bring down the brush opacity some more, just painting over the tree once more, just to give it some more depth. Okay, so next up, we want to clean up this image again, a thing that really is not fun, but we need to do it. So I want to merge all those layers into a new one. So I'm hitting Ctrl, Shift, Alt, E. And let me just duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl, J to have a backup. And I'm going to use the spot hitting brush first, zooming in and just brushing over all the three branches. So this area does look strange when using the spot healing brush. I'm just going to use the remove tool which is slower, but we will get better results. Just roughly painting over it. 
And once we have the selection, confirm. Okay, I just spent about 30 minutes cleaning up this shot, but I think it was worth it. So at this point we are done editing this image. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, feel free to ask if you have any questions in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.